I guess you've heard coding in the sense of programming. People say, oh, I do coding, which means I do computer programming or computer language programming. So when you do coding, you are able to write and understand programs in a computer language because language can be a code. And when you talk about code mixing and code switching, the word code means language which means people switch their language and mix their code, which is mix their language or languages. Because when you talk about code mixing and code switching, you're talking about people who are at least bilingual. They speak at least two languages, which means they are equipped with two linguistic systems, two different codes. Obviously, they can keep these two systems apart from each other, but what a lot of people do is, depending on the circumstances, they may actually end up mixing these two languages. Each of these languages is a code or a language and people mix their languages. So language mixing or code mixing happens. When you talk about code mixing or code switching, they don't mean the same thing although they may mean the same thing to some scholars depending on the research or depending on their theory but a lot of times you hear the word code mixing and code switching together because you could say a lot of times they take place they occur together but you could also say they're very similar things and i'm going to clarify what the difference is According to a lot of research, bilingual children mix elements of both languages in the same utterance as soon as they can produce utterances. And these utterances can be as short as two words. So basically, bilingual children would code mix by putting two words of two different languages in the same utterance. That's how minimal code mixing can be. It doesn't have to be a paragraph or a sentence. The difference, however, is code mixing refers to intrasentential mixing of languages, while code switching refers to intersentential mixing. Both code switching and code mixing are um, common among adults as well as children. There is a paper in linguistics, a 1980 paper by Shana Poplack, and the title of the paper is Sometimes I'll start a sentence in Spanish y termino en español. Uh, this is taken from the data that was collected for the research itself in which the person said that. As you can see here, the person starts sentence in English and then this next sentence is in Spanish. Is it intrasentential or intersentential? So intra means inside, right? And inter is between. Here the code switching is between two sentences. It's not within the same sentence. If you want to make a distinction between code switching and code mixing, this title Sometimes a third sentence in Spanish and termino en español itself is an example of code switching, not code mixing. What is code mixing? If it's intrasentential, it is code mixing. I have other examples from the same paper. Leo un magazine. Leo in Spanish means I read. Un means one. Magazine. Magazine is an English word. Here you have intrasentential which is code mixing, which means that you mix elements of two languages within the same clause, within the same sentence. And that's the distinction between code switching and code mixing, which makes this an example of code mixing. The next sentence, me iban a layoff. They were going to lay me off. Again, the word layoff is English and the rest of the sentence is Spanish. Leo un magazine, magazine. <laughs> this is kind of interesting because the word magazine is English, but the phonology of it has been changed a bit by the Spanish speaker. Me iban a dar layoff. 
they were going to lay me off again. Similar sentence, code mixing. Although, as I said, some scholars use the ter terms interchangeably, there is a distinction between the two. Code mixing is intra sentential while code switching is intersentential. Switching between languages within a clause that would include phrase, single word, or across morphing boundaries are intra-sentential switches. Intersentential switching takes place when one is one person switches at the end of a sentence for the duration of at least one entire sentence. You finish your sentence in one language, then for the next sentence you switch to a different language. Then you might switch back. That's what code switching is. So you switch between languages. But in code mixing, you mix elements, you mix words and phrases from language two into sentences of language A. A very interesting fact about code switching and mixing is that bilinguals code shift for the same reason that monolinguals style shift depending on such factors as who they talk to, where they are, etc. When people do this, then there is another issue that is involved, which is called language attitudes. When people code mix, there are different attitudes towards code mixing. And these attitudes may range from very positive to very negative. Let's say you're part of an Arabic speaking community and then you live in the US or Canada where the dominant language is English and then you start mixing elements of English into your Arabic when you speak to fellow members of your community in Arabic. The members of the community may have various attitudes towards your linguistic behavior and this, these attitudes can change from very positive to very negative. Regardless of language attitudes, when people do this, there will be certain ways, like certain new ways of speaking in those communities among those individuals, bilinguals, where a kind of mixed language is created. And there are many words in different communities that are hybrid words and are used to refer to that kind of lang linguistic behavior. For example, among the Spanish-speaking community, the, there's the word Spanglish, which means a mix of Spanish and English. There are similar words like Franglais, which means French and Anglais, which, which is English, so basically a mix of English and French. There's even Singlish, which refers to English spoken by Singaporeans. You might have heard other terms, which you can share in the comment section. They are linguistically very well structured and grammatically constrained. This is why code mixing, code switching are still the topic of a great deal of linguistic research. There are various theories about the reasons why people do it, or the research could be very descriptive in terms of what are the structures, what are the grammatical constraints that form the patterns of code mixing and code switching. And that concludes today's video. I'm sure a lot of you have a have personal first-hand or maybe second-hand experience of this linguistic phenomenon. It would be interesting if you can share it in the comment section. And see you in the next video.